the Abscondo Podcast. I just returned from visiting my family in Wisconsin, where I'm originally from. And I'm probably the only person in the world in the last few weeks who came from, from Europe, where I live, to visit Wisconsin for a vacation. Um, Wisconsin's a really interesting place. Um, I love my family so much. My my parents are getting a little bit older. They're in their upper 60s. My dad's turning 70 uh, in a few weeks. And I try to make it out there with, with my kids, you know, once a year, despite a very difficult and long journey with a newborn baby and so forth. But anyway, so I visited Wisconsin and had a wonderful time, but that's not what I wanted to talk about on this podcast. My parents are... Through the years, they've they've become sort of what I guess you might call fundamentalist Christian. And I don't mean that in in a derogatory sense. I mean they would identify as as that. Um, I don't know how to how to describe it, all the details of what their their faith is, but basically, um, they believe every word of the Bible as it's written without without really uh, seeing it as a story that's meant. To, to with a meaning that you're supposed to interpret the meaning you're supposed to literally believe every word and if the bible tells a story about what happened the idea is that you're supposed to just believe that that's what actually happened and of course my my faith my spirituality is all about um you know looking to words looking to stories from different faiths different spiritual leaders um that all point to the same truth. I'm open to, yes, Christianity, also Buddhism, also Taoism, also, you know, whatever whatever it may be, um, whatever it may be that points to a truth that resonates from within. And I recently, I, I'm, I'm still relatively new in my spirituality. I'm still only about, you know, a few years, let's say at least three, four, five years into this, even though uh, looking back on it, I always was, I think I was always moving in that direction, but to embrace it fully happened about maybe four years ago. And I was initially quite excited to be able to talk with my parents about their faith and find some commonality. I mean, I'm a student, of course, in miracles, and of course, that uses the Christian terminology to express spiritual truth. And I was hoping to share some of that with them, or at least be able to have some conversations with them and try to learn from them and try to to share some things with my parents and grow closer in that way. It was a wonderful um, opportunity that I felt had opened up in my life to be able to do that. And unfortunately, it hasn't ha- hasn't really happened, um, despite despite my my trying to to have those conversations over the years. I think the the obstacle was always the fact that that Christians, that the vast majority of Christians believe that the only way to heaven, the only way to enlightenment, well, they wouldn't call it that, salvation, I guess I would say, is through Jesus Christ. So you you accept the name of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You you're baptized, and that's the end of it. That's the only way. No one else is getting into heaven, and that's the only point. Of real disagreement, it's this this idea that you know we have the true spiritual faith, the true faith. We know God, and no one else does. And if it weren't for that simple problem, that misunderstanding, that 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 mutation of ego that crept into Christianity, which I'm sure Jesus probably never would have would have had had happen if that if if he had his choice. Um, there would be so much power in the Bible beyond what it already has. And so last week, visiting my parents, I went to a, to a baseball game with my, with my dad, with my kids and, and my partner Susanna and my dad and the, the Milwaukee Brewers game. And we're on the way and I thought, you know, instead of listening to music in the car, I put on my, um, I put on Eckhart Tolle, I put on uh, Dao De Jin, Dao Jing reading. I just wanted him to kind of get a sense of, of the types of things I was listening to, and and he was and he very calmly accepted that and listened. Of course, made no comments about it, and I appreciated that. And I and I and I said that I would like to go to his church service on Easter, 
I felt that it was a symbol of opening up both ways and maybe coming to some kind of ability to to share the love within, to share the oneness between us that is our faith. And um, it was wonderful. I think it was maybe the next day we... I think he felt more confident to start to start sharing some things with with me with us. They did, and and of course the only the only way to have that conversation is 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 to make it a Christian conversation because that's where they're comfortable. So fine. So the first thing my dad did is he grabbed his Bible, and he he wanted us to read the first paragraph, the first passage in John, and the New Testament. So here it is. I want to read it. To you, and, and I want to talk about my reaction to it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Wait, I didn't even get past the first sentence before I found a, a fundamental, what I, what I felt was a fundamental problem with the very first sentence my dad f- shared with me from the Bible. And by the way, I did read the whole New Testament when I was much, much younger. I haven't read it recently, but I'm familiar with the New Testament and the Bible. I used to go to church when I was when I was young, when I was a teenager, and before that. So anyway, my but my first, but he he felt inspired to share this with with us, and so we read this. And the very first thing it said that in the beginning was the Word, and I asked, I stopped right there, and I said, "How can a word come before a creator?" Doesn't a creator create a word? How can the word create a creator? It doesn't even make sense. I have a fundamental question about what this means. In the beginning was the word. Who spoke the word? It really bothered me. And and they were and and every time he would try to explain it, I agreed with his explanation. And I said, You're interpreting the Bible. And he said, No, this is what it says. And, he, and his his explanation was that the word is Christ. The word is that is the soul, the spirit within us. And when he explained it that way, I said, I agree with that explanation. But you're interpreting the Bible. And and you claim that every word in the Bible is the word of God, is truth. It needs no interpretation. And yet it makes no sense unless you interpret it. Because obviously the word a word cannot be spoken. A word is a sound that comes from the from making all these weird, you know. So only what a few dozen sounds our mouths can make in any language. And you cannot say that a word was before any universe was created. How would that even, how would it be spoken? It makes no sense at all, literally, if you take it literally. And so every time he would try to explain it, I agreed with his explanation. And I said, I agree with your interpretation. <laughs> so my point was, if you're going to read the Bible then you have to interpret. A word points to a truth. A word cannot be the truth. And that's the same thing if you're looking at Taoism, you're looking at Hinduism, you're looking at Buddhism, you're looking at atheism. If if there's some truth, and atheism I, I throw in there kind of reluctantly, <laughs> but if there's some truth, then it's a truth being pointed to that we know within, that we automatically get within. We don't have to worship the word. We don't have to argue about the word. It either points to a truth which can be expressed in multiple ways in so many different combinations of words, or it doesn't. And so we argued about this, and they kept insisting they weren't interpreting, even though they were interpreting every time I asked what it meant. <laughs> and in fact, every pasture that exists is an interpreter, and yet they claim not to be interpreting. I find that a very, very strange position. So I'm trying to help them through this. I'm trying to break through to open up and say, yeah, we we do interpret the Bible, and maybe there are some other things beyond the Bible that are interesting and can be interpreted in the same way and maybe even point to the same truths, which, of course, enlightened people understand. But but many, most, vast majority from my experience of Christians or any religion, the people who follow religion don't do that. They, they aren't open to anything beyond that religion. So, I, let's see, do I read the rest of this? You know, so the word. Uh, he was with, he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In this is the most confusing language I, I've read in a long time. You know, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. That's beautiful, right? 
and the light shines in the darkness, and, and the darkness did not comprehend it. I like that, and I, I can interpret that, and I understand what it means. It means that what matters, the eternal within us, is the spirit, the consciousness, that which is imperceptible, that was that's which was before the universe was created and exists after it ends, the nothingness. It can be completely embraced on the level of knowing within, which I think, in some level, my dad and my mom do understand. But they're not open to, to, to the fact that I understand it also. They want, they want to say that I don't understand it, which is interesting. The next day, my mom brought out a different Bible. And, and this, by the way, the passage I, re- I read was from the New King's James the new, the new King James Version. Okay, so there's a different Bible they had, and this is called the Living Bible, which I guess is for people, for a more simple understanding, perhaps younger people, you know, trying to understand it. So when I read, so I read the same passage in the Living Bible, and it goes like this: Before anything else existed, there was Christ with God. Now that first sentence is completely different. So you're talk, you're telling me that you believe every word of the Bible, which Bible, from which period, how many versions of the Bible exist, how many people touched every version, how many languages does the Bible exist in? It all requires interpretation. And if you're interpreting, what you're doing is you're using the beautiful words, the stories, and so many beautiful stories in the Bible, which are lacking in other kinds of texts. But most religions have wonderful, beautiful stories, even you know, in Zen, they talk about, you know, what this, what this Zen master said to that one and so forth. It's beautiful. And I think it's missing in a lot of my expressions, and therefore I'm telling you a story today. Um, so, in this version, before anything else existed, there was Christ with God. Now, yeah, Christ, if you interpret Christ to mean spirit, the, the, the self, the true self beyond physical form, if you don't if you don't attach the word Christ to Jesus as as only he exists as only Jesus was Christ no one else has any Christ within them because they they even talk about that we all have, need to need to exp- need to find the Christ within us so even Christians acknowledge that that not only Jesus Christ was Christ we all are Christ but if i said that they wouldn't agree but that's what they're saying <laughs> there's a little bit of ego involved here when you talk to a religious person, because they don't want to, they don't want you. If unless you're, unless you're a, you would call yourself, define yourself as a Christian, with external attachment to the word Christianity and to the church you go to and things like this, which is wrong. Which is when I say wrong, which is missing the mark a little bit, because it's all pointing to the truth, and the truth is what matters. The truth of of what we are. So I think I've, I've probably belabored this point a little bit. I can read further. But the interesting thing is the very first passage of John, which, and I'm not sure why my dad thought that was the right passage to read, I think to prove to me that 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 Christ, that, that the word of, of Christ, um, that their version of God was there from the very beginning. But that's not what it's saying. It's saying that there was this thing. Now you could call it the Tao, or you could call it Christ, you can call it God. But yes, I t- everyone, every spiritual person agrees with the same thing. And until we understand that that there's truth in all of it, that not in, it points to the same truth. They're just sounds we make with our mouths to communicate the same truth. We have to move beyond this idea that we, only we, are we are better at the truth. We, we possess the truth. Others don't. That is the consciousness revolution. It's one of the manifestations of it. And I wish I could say we got beyond that. But, you know, they did. And it doesn't matter what the outcome was. You know, it doesn't matter whether they got, got it. I don't have a goal that they get it. Because I'm, what, I'm, what I'm glad about is that they do get on some level, the underlying truth, but it always bothered them. And uh, when 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 you try to interpret, when you try to say, "Ah, that's pointing to this," you're trying to explain it. No, don't explain it. Only we can explain <laughs> can explain it, even though we're not explaining it. Even though it's re- okay, I'll I'll let it go. <laughs> um, 
just a little interesting antidote about you know about religion versus spirituality that that religion tends to think that that truth points to it whereas spirituality tends to think that that um, religions point to the truth. It's kind of the, vice versa. Um, so the stories are the, are told to point to a truth. And this whole thing about pointing to truth, I, I took this from Eckhart Tolle. I mean, I learned this from Eckhart Tolle, and, and I always found that, uh, that boring. I always found it boring when he said, words are signposts. Okay, whatever, move on with your point. But it's so important because if you don't get this, that the the truth isn't in the word, um, then you don't want to worship any any particular sentence, right? You you use the sentence to point to the truth, and you worship the truth. You align with that truth, which is silent, which is which is beyond words, beyond any form. So you know, may we all may we come to embrace silence, just as we come to embrace any teaching from any religion or any teacher or any person with or without any credibility, any official ordained credibility, may we embrace it and may we accept it and may we please stop arguing about the words. I'll leave it at that for this podcast and we'll be back uh, next week. And sorry, I missed a couple but I was traveling, and I'll use that as my excuse. Um, thank you for listening, and please feel free to get in touch with me about anything. Ask questions. I'd be happy to um, to address anything uh, on the next podcast. Thanks so much. I'll leave you with an Abscondo song. Picture me sitting on the softest edge Of my unmade bed looking serious It's not as if this should be something said Not like anyone who's out there would hear us When you're all dressed When you walk these streets You feel like the stranger you would like to be All dressed When you walk these streets You feel like the stranger you would like to be like me Picture me riding on a crosstown train By a man who breathes like he's furious Cause when I open that can of spring It's missed on nearly everything near us I'm not impressed When you answer the phone When you talk to someone just beyond your control I should have guessed I should have sat all along Cause anyone's still looking for a friend that all When you're all dressed Walk these streets You feel like the stranger you would like to me So why not bless you? you stand there alone? Well, everyone is looking at you See you at all like me Sometimes I feel lost in this town Sometimes I feel lost in this town Lost in this town When you're all dressed When you walk these streets Thank you.